Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Mandy Kane Lane. Um, I just want to address this real quick. Uh, I moved and I'm in a new room, new place, uh, with the PC and everything. And, um, the last couple of videos I did from this room, everybody was talking about how nice the lighting was. And it's because I have a ginormous window right here next to me, um, that way. And, um, that lovely lighting I had was natural daylight, sunlight, uh, and yeah, I agree, it looked great. <laughs> but, it is currently 8.14 p.m., the sun is gone, so I can't have that fabulous lighting, I'm so, it's, it's like, it's gonna be dark. So, apparently, in this new place where I am, it's gonna be one of those situations where the lighting is going to be sometime maybe good, sometime maybe shit. And today is shit, cause it's nighttime. But whatever, this is the time I have, and we're gonna watch the Ricky Gervais show. Um, also, I know it's been a while since I've seen this. An idiot abroad coming soon, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but yes, I have had some of the toughest weeks these last couple of weeks. Very very tough moments of my life. So everybody has been commenting and asking, how, ah, why haven't you been watching? When's Carl coming? And all those things, and honestly, it's just because I was unable to until now. So, we are going to watch, we have, oh, and, ah, oh, oh, season two started, like, way better than the ending of season one of the Ricky Gervais show, so I'm super excited. The Ricky Gervais show, season two, episode two, Doppelganger, uh, that should be fun, but I, I have high hopes because, um, the first episode of season two was actually really, really fun, so let's just watch. <laughs> Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, OK, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What, would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that would be the end of conversation. <laughs> right? What would do me head in is, does he, does he think the same way, look the same way, exactly dresses? Exactly the same. Yeah. Why is How he automatically mad? <laughs> same way, exactly dresses? the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> because you did you. <laughs> That's a mad one I was. Ricky, Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. I know that's that was. incredible. <laughs> no, because that is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get that. the Guinness Book of Records on this? It, has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it. This other person's going, all right, thanks for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> and then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or, so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it is a bit weird. But you know the you know? truth, you idiot. Because How would I know which one I was? So anyway. But bear in mind, you, what could, would pass, you, do? you could pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play Trick Street? Would you, uh, you know... You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? <laughs> no, because you could it would do that end up... with anybody. It doesn't have to be a clone. <laughs> um, two thoughts. First thought is um, there's a show on Netflix with Paul Rudd that's called Living With Yourself. And I don't know what happened to it. I guess they canceled it or I don't know what happened because it just has one season and it kind of died there. But I actually really liked the show. Um, and it's about this, the, the, the clone and, and having to live with that and um i thought it was really cool this topic didn't exactly come up because they like the clone the concept of how do i know which is which is the original or whatever the original should always know right and uh the clone maybe may have issues with that but just try to get on the carl you know frequency wavelength and um, second thing that came to mind is there's a movie called The Island with the guy that I can't remember his name. <laughs> and everybody's going to hate me if I get this wrong. <laughs> but I think it's the guy that plays Obi-Wan Kenobi. I haven't seen Star Trek. Ugh, oh, fuck. Oh, God. 
Oh man, this comment section is gonna be a mess. Star Wars, sorry. Star Trek came out because I was talking about it today, actually, or yesterday. I don't know. My memory's trash. With my brother. Star Wars. Hold on, I'm gonna. Go just so I don't have to read so many comments and people saying how dumb I am and how offensive that just was or whatever. I am going to look his name up. The island. You. How do I say that? Ewan? Ewan McGregor. All right. Oh, and Scarlett Johansson. And. Uh. <laughs> give me a second. Oh, Ewan Kenobi. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's him. So we're good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> It's on my it's on my to-do list people watch it. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We're good. So anyway, uh the movie The Island is also about clones and stuff and um again really good movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, but the clones don't know they're clones. Which is interesting, but obviously the original always knows cuz like you just do, okay? Up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was my doppelganger. <laughs> it can only... I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a, it, Again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. And he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, Wait, would though, it? Wait, no, because... Now I'm, I'm thinking, right, they're talking about doppelgangers. I, they kind of like mixed doppelganger and clone, or did I bring up clone myself? Is this another Pringles pretzel fiasco? Which, by the way, I am blaming on the headphones I was wearing, the little ones. I guess they're trash, so I, I stopped using them. But um, they said clone, right? I'm not crazy. Because doppelganger and clone are different. Doppelganger is just like somebody that's out there that looks, you know, like you. And I think, and clone is a copy paste of you. So if it's a copy paste of you, why would it be evil? I never understood that concept in like movies or sci-fi shows or whatever. When you, why, why is, why is a clone always evil? I don't get it, but okay. Because he's being me. So he'd be sat wherever I am anyway, because <laughs> he'd want to do what I want to do. Of course. So pointless, but I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That right? was amazing. That was we, like that was like experiencing what it would be like. If there was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he was we, a discussion could, with himself. we could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? <laughs> does this mean? <laughs> does this mean though that I could just sit at home and not do anything, and just send me out on? Yes. Yes. And any, any, when, he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. 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 You're separate people. You're separate people. Nope. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger. Then, well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a... <sighs> Fridge now. I'm going to Google uh, doppelganger because, uh, yeah. Just to, to stop the confusion, at least in myself, doppelganger. Okay, uh-huh. A wraith or apparition of a living person as distinguished from a ghost. Okay, the concept of the existence of a spirit double, an exact but usually invisible replica of every man, bird, or beast is an ancient and widespread belief. <laughs> that doesn't help me! What? I, I, okay, hold on. Double walker. It's German for double walker. That says that's what this says. Are non biologically related lookalikes. There we go. See, that's what I'm talking about. So they're mixing stuff. They're not genetically related to you, nor do they have any connection to your family history, but for some odd reason have similar features to you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, they're 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 mixing stuff. A real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that. How it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike. Do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go. Oh, don't they look like each other? 
they have different haircuts. They don't they don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their ass stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. I assume. Right, okay. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay. okay. Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's it's a leap of imagination here. And I've, I've, I've definitely got to, answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door <laughs> to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no <laughs> keyhole <laughs> near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. There you go. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. Why are they but smiling? One of them is not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah. But would yeah. they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> Why... <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. Okay, well, I'll tell you the answer. No, no, then... no, I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Is he? Uh... <laughs> No, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on. Right, so you go up and you yeah. go. Um, you right, go... hang on. Well, look, let's, let's By the way, that. just FYI, I've 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 heard this conundrum in all kinds of different with doors, with this, with that, all kinds of different. I can never either remember the answer or I don't know if I know it, and I don't want to think about it. <laughs> let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys. Okay, <laughs> right. But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, well, me, and, me and Steve decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh... Look, look away, Carl. Aww. <laughs> okay, right, so we've decided, okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, Got some post for God here. <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. No, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe right, the question's right. coming. I got you got some post for God here, yeah. Uh and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question, still not a question. No, let so it calm finish. down, it's yeah, God in, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm with Steve. It's, it's not a question, finally. still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just. Uh... Well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, OK? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say 
he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what <laughs> life's... I'm confused! <laughs> where you use... Same, and I'd say... I'm having you. a coral because moment. After. Well, heaven. Yeah. Wait, what... I want to hear and the explanation what's... again. If I was to ask the other one, what Wait. door he... So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. <laughs> I didn't... Steve, what, the, in what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, I don't feel like that was you, well explained. Are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same, and I'd say heaven as well. Right. Right. So who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what life's... <laughs> well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's Wait. a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer, and you go, do you know what? I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> OK. How many twins does Carl know? I don't know any of them. I, I've never oh, met. Jim oh, Bates. wait, no. There are, there are two twin girls that are act like freaking identical that come to the theater um, quite often. Uh, but I don't know them. I've never met properly a pair of an identical twin. And Carl, like, he speaks like he knows hundreds of them. Okay. Bring it down. Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Uh, here we are. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat. So I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what have you been doing with that mirror and that? But <laughs> that, that was... What? <laughs> No, just you. So, know, just, what? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's just doing, bit, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in mean? what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? What? Of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing <laughs> I am what I am and just checking out their no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh... Which Carl, you're not in the phobic way, are you? No, I'm not. I'm, well, I'm not. This is what, why... Well, but, <laughs> why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he was doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was... I, tried, I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, yeah. You know, it could crack and... Because it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right. So, like, when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right, you, you wouldn't know and what have you, but it means that I can't put any pictures up. But you have that's, three that's other walls. All, that's all I'm saying. You have put a nail in it. And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? No, so I, I, that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but... Don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone, oh, I can't have paintings anymore because... What do you think of Dali? Going, melting clocks and stuff. No? I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Yeah. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, have put you seen his lobster telephone? 
That annoys me. Why? Because I think what annoyed me more with that is when I heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. e- they were eating. That's a good, hell of an anecdote. Right? No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. I love and, uh, how he didn't an- know. Ricky complains that he didn't know and he just made up a fact. Okay, they were eating. Like, no. <laughs> no, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Right. And uh, That's Andy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Have of phone? started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Like Bob. And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Me just talk- too. Me too. Um, I had a discussion about this two days ago. Um, at my mom's house, looking through... I, I did years, years of art school, and I, I, I drew for years and stuff. And um, my mom collected all of that. And we were just going through folders and folders and just so many artwork and drawings and this and paintings and stamps all kinds of things and uh, try honestly trying to weed out the ones that suck to throw them away so they don't take up as much space right and um i just constantly was looking through all my work and i found some really cool stuff like some really cool drawings i was i haven't drawn in years properly i i made a, a drawing slash painting like last year but I, I like sat down and properly drawn something i haven't in years Probably the last things are the are the speed drawings on my channel, which since they were they were done for the channel and done fast and stuff, they aren't even the greatest. But anyway, um, I just had mountains and mountains of stuff, and I was looking through stuff, and I was like, I I was actually they, I found a lot of things that I didn't remember making. Like I recognize them, I can recognize that it's my own and stuff. But I'm like, wow, okay, this one's really cool, or ooh, this one turned out really awesome, and I was like. It's weird what I'm going to say. I was impressed by the things I made. Not so much talent-wise, like, oh, wow, I'm extremely talented. But um, more, like, creativity-wise. I was like, oh, cool, this is this was a really cool idea. I don't, I don't even remember having this idea. And it turned out super cool or whatever. And um, got me talking with my mom and stuff about, you know, why I'm not in the art scene anymore and all that and why I don't draw anymore or paint anymore or this and that. And... Um, I told her I was just absolutely, basically what Carl's saying, I was absolutely fed up with the artistic world. And um, in, in, in those moments when I was drawing all the time and I was in school and stuff, I entered a bunch of contests and all kinds of things. And when they put out, you know, they, they, they do the gallery show of all the, you know, workings or, or whatever. And um, then after like a week, they pick a win or whatever. My stuff, uh, everybody always came up to me and said, oh, you're going to win for sure. This is amazing, blah, blah, blah. Because I always used, used to really like doing hyperrealism, which is like very impressive up close. And uh, I was always, I always made the best, chose my best work for the contest or whatever. And um, like I would always, every, people would always come up and say, wow, that's brilliant. Love it. It's. I'm sure you're going to win, blah, blah, blah. And then when they would announce the win, there was obviously, I never expected the win, but there was obviously like always very, you know, several things and there was other cool things. And I'll, I would always, you know, try to pick a winner that wasn't myself. I'm like, oh, I'm sure this one's going to win because it's awesome, blah, blah, blah. And every freaking time, the thing that won was a piece of garbage on a canvas dude every time it was just like a blue line and a red dot and everybody's like oh my god that's amazing it's so moving it's so artistic it's so deep and dude it's a freaking blue line and a red dot on a white piece of paper so i just got so frustrated with it every freaking time the thing that won and was like showered with such praise and all that was just freaking absolute bongers dude so um that happened several times, 
and I just got mad at that. And then there was, um, I don't know how many years ago, there was like an art show. I don't know if it was in New York or Milan or wherever the hell it was, but it was an important place. And it was a freaking banana pinned to the wall, dude. And that was it. And um, I don't obviously remember properly the story, but somebody ate the banana and the artist got like super pissed, like, no, that's a hundred thousand dollar banana, cause it's not a banana, it's art. And the guy was like, dude, it's a banana, that's why I ate it. And uh, it, it just made a whole scandal cause the guy ate the art. And it's just like, oh God, dude, I hate that world. I absolutely hate it. And cause proper appreciation for talent and beautiful things in art is it's just, it's gone. And now it's just such trash. And um, another thing that's killing artists is the AI things that, that you just, you put a prompt and oh, they make such gorgeous things. My brother has, I think it's Mid Journey. Oh my God, dude, I love that thing. Such beautiful things come out of that. And um, artists are getting mad about it. I personally am not because I think it's really cool. Um, and I was never a concept artist, so that, that's like killing concept art, but um, it's really cool stuff. But yeah, it's killing off artists. So that is my rant on that. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Telling you what I know, I saw is that annoying me. Because it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Oh, anyway, uh, my point was stuff like that, like a lobster phone. I've, I've been to art galleries. I've been all over. It pisses me off. Just like it pisses off Carl. It's insane. It's insane the things that get called art. Very sad. Telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. Well, Suzanne wife likes some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. <coughs> just wallpaper. I'm just Autumn saying here. we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> Okay. My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed. <laughs> oh, my God, I absolutely the, love dad, the drawing. How much it would be to get her back Auntie garden Nora. astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her What does she want to do, start a football team? <laughs> <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturfed? <laughs> she likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But... Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> oh. Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why, why, it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what annoys do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage sending it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no it's good. It's, okay. no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. <laughs> At no point did I say you stressed out. You said, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it. Because every this. time I go around there, it comes straight from the goonies. <laughs> <laughs> it it's like me. the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. <laughs> right, the one is one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you know, do you know what gets done me, though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, so he's just sat there. Like, and then it was thinking exactly the same fucking <laughs> thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then oh on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's, it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards. <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. There you go. I don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why Why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, Surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is... <laughs> Why? Of anything. Uh, <laughs> that was that was specific. Of anything. No, but what people who are interested in such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? <laughs> no, but what, what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is, at a really young age? <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, big, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they, about it. They oh, sit right. down and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. Do you know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> He has a point. Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio, God. you can imagine. Did not know oh. what hit it. God almighty, oh were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Parker? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? What oh. did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> so that's... Uh, <laughs> that's the that was a hell of a <laughs> time. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, so that's, man. Uh, oh, by the way, I have seen that clip, but it got blocked, so... But yeah, <laughs> that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival, fun. yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of like someone's flat that they let out, and uh, so I had to look. I had to watch the TV it was like from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And um, so, but it looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12-hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. And the worst bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land, when they say the toilets are out of bounds now... <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on. Mortified. The noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh Christ! And um and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could I'm like packed a pair of underpants and jeans in the in the bag in the hold all just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really... Because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly, everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. You know, just really... <laughs> annoyed, with your, with your, with oh just God, hobbling the along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. You know, just really... Annoyed, <laughs> with, your, with, your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just any Anyone who could have even passes you, oh, you just, oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I, I think managed... it's hilarious. Hold on, yeah. and... that the animation for this is him grabbing his butt, dude. <laughs> like, what is that gonna do? What is that gonna stop? <laughs> God, no, no, that will not do anything. Or so I'm told. Just anyone who could have even <laughs> passes you, oh, you just, oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time. Got into the time, it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But no, that was that was not anything compared with the first. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But no, that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day, I was, I went for a walk. Ibadan Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio. It made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive and that you know none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach because I I was shopping and I needed a wee, right? And we went for a quick impromptu swim. And I thought, oh, we in the in just the sea. Think of him. 
I'm this beach right we're tired here. Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys because they and are. And you are, could I say this, the whitest man yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn oh. fish. <laughs> so, well, so well, this was the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee <laughs> in a well, litter tray. You see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival. Well, <laughs>
it went by like mega fast too okay so there were some you know carl moments mandy moments mandy rants and some steven stories that's interesting interesting episode i love how nobody liked ricky's cat <laughs> weird but um ooh, i'm excited for, for episode three dude this, these are getting good again because i feel like they kind of fell off a bit season one there was like i think it's 13 episodes the last four ish i feel like they just were grasping at straws and kind of they were also quite choppy and, and scene and scene like they just grabbed little bits and snippets of of moments that they like didn't know where to put them and they just kind of stuck them together and animated them i feel like it, it would have been quality wise better if it would have had like four episodes less and then they started here but i'm glad that they they, they started with a real good cook again so i'm excited to watch more anyway okay i need to run i'm gonna watch i gotta watch a lot of things so as soon as i can i will guys you know the drill whatever you have to do have a great one thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting uh in any way possible commenting liking watching and you know more also above and beyond everybody just you guys are awesome and i really appreciate it and um i am i'm i'm feeling better so yeah so thank you i'm glad to be here and i will continue to be here watching stuff and things as one does anyway toodles guys